Men aren't the only people who cheat. Women cheat as well. But is there a difference between what motivates it? As a matter of fact, quite often, there is. So why do men cheat? We'll explain that on this episode of Relationship Radio. Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Bean. Welcome to our program. This is Kimberly Holmes, our CEO. Kimberly is finishing up, hopefully before very long, her PhD in psychology. My yeah. PhD was uh, earned researching the causes of and correlations between marital satisfaction and sexual satisfaction. Kimberly, you know that because of that, I have been teaching sex mm -hmm. as a sexologist as a matter of fact, I taught eight years at the university right here in Nashville, Tennessee, teaching human sexuality until I just didn't have time to do it anymore. And so we look at that and say, okay, we know that a certain percentage of men cheat and a certain percentage of women, but we don't know exactly. Because if you say, what percentage of people cheat? Mm -hmm. It really boils down to which research project you look at. Well, and how honest the people are. Exactly. And but so, they, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've listened to a couple of, of trainings on this and the best guess is between 30 and 50 percent of all couples will experience cheating in their relationship mm -hmm. but did they divide it down into how many of that would be the man no. cheating and how many the female no did not okay we see both mm -hmm. in our workshops now we do see more men in our workshops who have had extramarital affairs than women but it is not uncommon for us at all mm -hmm. to have a woman in our workshop who has had an extramarital affair so let's talk about men to begin with. Is it just because men are all just selfish, dirty pigs? Is that what's going on here? You nailed it. <laughs> Episode done. Moving on. <laughs> well, maybe a better answer would be given at this point. <laughs> no, it's not because of that reason. But there, I'm interested to hear, I mean, you were about to tell me right before we started and I said, save it for the podcast. <laughs> we're about to get <laughs> into it. What, what some of the differences are. Well, Dr. Barry McCarthy kind of divides affairs into three different ways. And he's a very well-known sexologist, a, a man that I have a lot of respect for. And Dr. McCarthy calls one of, the, calls one of these things the high opportunity, low involvement. Mm. Now, we in the past have typically referred to that kind of affair as being a short-lived affair mm -hmm. because it's primarily sexual. It's not really about a strong connection to the other person. Therefore, uh, being in the wrong place at the wrong time drinking too much and doing some stupid stuff, letting your ego get out of control. Mm -hmm. Those are episodes which may not be the proverbial one night stand. It might actually last longer than that, but they're high opportunity, low involvement, meaning this is just available. I mean, it's right here in front of me and I don't have to emotionally connect to the other person to make this happen. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing he pointed out is that many husbands and actually I have run into this. I've actually witnessed this myself, that many husbands with a high uh, opportunity, low involvement will actually not think of their sexual escapade as being adultery or an affair. Even if it was sexual? Mm -hmm. They'll think of it as, well, I was just a guy doing what guys do in those kinds of situations. Hmm. So I remember a fellow I was talking to years ago and his wife was quite upset because of his involvement with a woman who worked for him. And, and when I was talking to him, he said, it wasn't that big a deal. It was just oral sex. In other words, he was dismissing it as any guy would do that. It's not really an affair. I wasn't really cheating on my wife. It was an opportunity that uh, fell on my lap and I took advantage of it. And so he didn't see it as being anything wrong. And so Barry says, it's amazing how many men over the years that he has worked with, that if they get into that kind of situation, actually don't feel like they've done really anything wrong. Fascinating, huh? Very fascinating. Uh -huh. Talked to a man not long ago uh, who has been involved with a lot of high-end escorts when he travels. He's a married man. Of course, his wife had no idea. And, and at the time... He didn't really feel guilty about it. It was like, I have the money. Uh, I'm over here in this town. This really has nothing to do with my marriage. And so what's really wrong with this? I'm just, it would be the same as if I decided to, uh, to play poker one night, something like that. And so sometimes some men are involved in that. If why I'm, though? Why? why do they not, where is the disconnect in this is adultery I'm literally cheating on my wife. According to Barry, uh, and I think, you know, Dr. McCarthy is a pretty smart guy. According to him, it's because they think they're just doing what a man would do in that situation. They're just being a guy. Doing a guy thing that really does not relate to their marriage whatsoever. 
Okay, let's go back to the dirty pig thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can see that you would see that. But actually, I've had females give much the same excuse. When I would teach human sexuality at, at the university level, it was a Christian university, and so most of my class members were uh, professing Christians. And, and I have had female students, and we'll talk about that more in the, in the next episode that we do, but I've had female students tell me that they haven't ever had sex, but they have done oral sex with their boyfriends and the boyfriends with them, but they've never had sex and they're still virgins. Their view is it was a high opportunity and I took advantage of it, but because of the fact that it was not uh, penile vaginal intercourse, PBI, then therefore it was not sex. And I've had female students argue vehemently with me about that. I get that. I mean, I, I, I understand that. I don't agree with it. I understand it. But that is still different than, so even if we were to just say it's kissing, still, if a husband kisses another woman, he has breached the marital trust wall and should feel like he's done something wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you justify it. That's the bottom line. I don't know how they're justifying that this is okay and I don't need to tell well, my Well, I spouse. think part of it's just cultural. I remember way back when Bill Clinton was running for president, I was speaking in Philadelphia at some corporate event. I was taking a shuttle back to the airport and there were several businessmen on that shuttle with me. And, and they were all talking about the election, and, and uh, all of them were going to vote for, vote for Clinton. And so I just raised a question. I said, does it bother you that one of the women he had an affair with just had her uh, uh, spread in Playboy magazine? Does that not make you wonder about his morality? And to a person, they all looked at me like I was crazy, and they said, have you seen her picture? Well, no, I didn't see that episode of Playboy. Well, she was beautiful, and, and we think, go get a man, take advantage of what you can. And it's like, this is what men do. Therefore, it's not a bad thing. And sure, it, it, we don't think it was immoral in the least. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. So a lot of it's going to have to do with a person's beliefs and values. Yes. Got it. But it's interesting how many people whose beliefs and values would preclude adultery will still justify some of those behaviors. So why would men have an extramarital affair? Sometimes it's because the opportunity exists mm -hmm. and the man has not fortified himself enough in his own beliefs and values mm -hmm. to be able to resist those uh, all of a sudden right in front of you temptations. Mm -hmm. Now it's less likely for a woman to do that. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that in the next episode. It's less likely for a woman to do that. Although it's beginning to happen more and more particularly among women uh, as our culture continues to change, where like we have every right to do whatever a man does. How, why would somebody judge me differently as a female than they would judge him as a male? And so as the culture continues to change, there are more women who will go to the bar and either pick up somebody or allow themselves to be picked up and have sex and still not think of it as being bad. It was like, I just did this for my own pleasure, it shouldn't matter. Hmm. Now, while that kind of affair exists and we see that, the one that we deal with most often is when a man winds up falling, quote, deeply in love, end quote, with another woman. Mm -hmm. Right. Limerence. You can find a ton of resources about limerence on our YouTube, on our podcast, but that's basically when, it's what we call the emotional affair. They there's a madly in love feeling. It typically begins because they've gotten close. Typically, a lot of times it's someone that they've worked with or currently work with, maybe an assistant, maybe someone who sits at the desk right next, right next to in them. In other words, they have to have exposure to develop a there's relationship. There's a proximity, there's an exposure and a repeti repetitive nature to it over time. Mm -hmm. And um, and they begin to develop an actual relationship by talking about things. The other person begins to listen to them, accepts them. It's kind of this emotional support for them that maybe they're not getting at home. Maybe they're not getting at home. And they begin to fall in love. And it could be they actually are mm -hmm. getting at home. Mm 
Mm. But because of the fact that they don't put don't put any barriers up to the mm-hmm. development of this relationship, it deepens and deepens until finally the brain uh, uh, chemicals begin to take control, and then the person loses control, and then they'll wind up saying, oh, "But you don't understand. Uh, nobody's ever loved anybody like I love her," and that limerence can be that deep. In our membership area, we have toolkits about limerence. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Lots of resources, a lot of support, a lot of community support for people who are the ones in limerence or the ones whose spouse is in limerence and they're trying to figure out how to save their marriage still. But that's, yeah, that's in our save membership. Okay. Dealing with affairs would really be dependent upon which of those two it would be. Actually, McCarthy talks about a third kind of affair. And that's an affair that basically is a continuing affair without a strong, it's still low involvement, but it's not over time. It's like, uh, well, I remember speaking for a big corporation years ago, and I I thought one couple at that big meeting was a a husband and wife, and and I was told by people, no, no, they actually work in different parts of the country. But every time we have an uh, annual Mm -hmm. meeting, they come and they act as husband and wife for that weekend while we're here. And then they go back to their wives, their husband, one husband, one wife, and they live like that the rest of the year. They don't have any more contact with them. They don't send any emails. They only do it when it, and it's here. And so it's still a high opportunity, the kind of thing. It's still a low opportunity. I'm, I'm sorry, still a low involvement sort of thing, but it's a repetitive low involvement. And people in those situations tend to be able to justify it and don't call it an affair either. Again, I can't wrap my mind around how you can justify that it's not an affair. They do it by convincing themselves in those situations. I'm still in love with my wife. I'm going home to my wife. And therefore, this was just a little sign of thing that happened on the side, and it doesn't really mean anything. I wonder how their wives would feel about that. Oh, I think quite (laughs) differently. I'm I'm not justifying it, but if you say one of men have affairs. And so you might be thinking, well, then how how can I make sure my husband never has an affair? Well, we would recommend that you learn all about relationships and with what our membership, something like that. Yeah. I mean, I thought you were going to say chain them in the basement so that they won't ever have an affair. But we could help too. (laughs) That would probably be a better way to do it. Yeah, I mean, that's right. In our membership, learning about how to strengthen your marriage, how to keep it strong. And and a lot of people don't realize that if you don't actually intentionally invest time-wise, intentionality-wise into making your marriage great, that it can begin to devolve over time and you don't even realize that's what's happening. So please be intentional. And in our membership, we have a ton of resources that can help you with that. Mm -hmm. And so mostly we've just given you news about why men cheat. We haven't told you a whole lot about what to do to help keep men from cheating. So at least think about it like this. We have resources. We hope you check them out. But at the same time, some op- good open conversations about these topics. Mm-hmm. You could actually say to your husband, if you're a lady listening right now, I just heard Dr. Beam and Dr. Holmes, soon to be Dr. Holmes, talking about this, and they said that some men do that. And then start a conversation with your husband about that mm-hmm. and say, what do you think about that? Listen, because you see, sometimes you can help people be prepared to resist temptation if they've actually thought about it before they get into it. Mm -hmm. So we recommend those kind of conversations, but we still need to talk about why women cheat. So let's do that on the next episode of Relationship Radio.